Why be an atheist or why are Christians such jerks? And I wonder if perhaps that's the way that an unbelieving world looks at those who carry the name of Christ. This is a true story. I wish I was making this story up. This happened this month, or the end of last month, in Illinois. State Representative Monique Davis, a Chicago Democrat, berated a local atheist activist named Rob Sherman for his beliefs, or rather lack thereof. Sherman was testifying before the legislature, that's the atheist, about a million dollar state, state grant that Governor Blagachik sneakily directed toward the Pilgrim Baptist Church. Couple that with the debate on Illinois' mandated school moment of silence period, which is still in legal limbo, and it's clear that bringing an atheist before some legislatures, so legislators was a recipe for disaster. This is what the representative said. It's dangerous for our children to even know that your philosophy exists. Rep Representative Davis told Sherman, demanding that he leave his seat. You have no right to be here. We believe in something. You believe in destroying. You believe in destroying what this state was built upon. Really? It's dangerous for our children to even know that your philosophy exists? To an atheist? You have no right to be here? Because you're an atheist, you have no right to be heard? Really? Did somebody say he's a jerk? Amen. Well, that's a politician. And we all know that politicians aren't right. But is it really any different for us? Jeff, I'm sorry, not Jeff, I'll read him in a minute. Questions were posted for Lee Strobel, who is a defender, who used to be an atheist and is a defender of the Christian faith now. Why are modern Christians convinced that the greatest danger to society is homosexual marriage? Jesus never once mentioned any prohibitions against homosexuality, did he? Someone else, what is the motivation for Christians to spread their beliefs and support laws and only defend their beliefs? Doesn't Christianity teach tolerance? Most Christians that I've been to, excluding fundamentalists, teach tolerance as a virtue and do not discount your neighbor for his or her beliefs. So why is it that there is such a large following for the anti-same-sex marriage movement and other movements that wish to put Christian values as the standard? What does an outside world see when they think of Christians? According to George Barnett, in the last 10 to 15 years, the public perception of Christians has dropped from a majority that believe Christians are a positive influence to a majority that believe, in, especially among the young, younger generation, that Christians are a detriment to society. This is what an outside world sees when they look at the church. Well, this is obviously, it's just people on TV. It's people in the public eye that are gone a little crazy, really. All right. Research behaviors and attitudes between Christians and non-Christians. Have been divorced among those who've been married. Born again Christians, 27%. Non-Christians, 23%. Gave money to a homeless person or poor person in the past year. Born again Christians, 24%. Non-Christians, 34%. Watched an X-rated movie in the past three months. Born again Christians, 9%. Non-Christians, 16%. Donated any money to a nonprofit organization in the past month. Born again Christians, 47. Non Christians, 48. Bought a lottery ticket in the past week. Born again Christians, 23. Non Christians, 27%. Attended a community meeting on a local issue in the past year. Born again Christians, 37%. Non Christians, 42%. Feel completely or very successful in life. Born again Christians, 58%. Non Christians, 49. Are still trying to figure out the purpose of our life. 36% Christians, 47. Non Christians. Satisfied with your life, born again Christian 69, non Christian 68. Researcher George Barna concludes we think and behave no differently from anyone else. Could it be that my life and your life are the greatest cause for disbelief? 
in the people around us? Could it be that our lives are so similar to the lives of our neighbors and the lives of our co-workers that they look at us and say the only reason that God makes any difference in your life at all is that you spend an hour or two at a place called church every week. Could it be that the, the stresses of finance affect us the same? We treat marriage the same. We treat our relationships the same. We treat our careers the same. We're stressed and obsessed about these same things. Does God actually make a difference? If I were standing on the outside looking in, that would be one of my first questions. 